Hey everybody, call me Felix, and today we have another instant noodle review. Although, you can't call this instant noodles because this is ramen nagi to go in these frozen boxes. So it would be kind of an insult to think of them as instant noodles. And here again with me is Warren to cook it all! Yo guys, I'm here again to demo this one. Mm -hmm. This is a beer ramen, beer chef, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go. So we're going to do ramen nagi butao king. This is the regular uh, tonkatsu ramen you get. Um in ramen nagi chains in especially manila or uh, other more posh parts than any local you can't get ramen nagi in locos norte so we had these delivered um you know they're mm -hmm. about 900 to a thousand pesos a box i think it's the cheaper one of the two which comes at 800 and then the red king comes at 990. um we also have the green and black king but we're gonna do yeah. a separate uh, video on that or for her separate day so we're gonna yeah. taste two today so let's make the butao king first because that is a regular tonkatsu oh well, you're just unpacking red king instead uh, ha, ha, ha. going in that order okay so here's our unboxing of what's in a ramen nagi to go box now i've had ramen nagi in manila it's Practically the closest thing you get to Ichiran, the famous Ichiran ramen in Japan. You can customize it to any specification you want. So I've had this um, twice in Metro Manila, and they're both awesome. So, um, but I only had Butao King, and I just customize it with extra firm noodles and um, extra firm noodles and then medium spice, I think. Okay, so this is our Sha Shao pork. Then you have these mushrooms here. That looks like the red sauce. Mm -hmm. this, looks... I think I, this one can put in the soap. Uh, yeah, red sauce. They look like they're the same though, but you have to look which is the stock or what. I think those are ju that's just extra sauce that makes it extra red. That I'm not sure. But Warren read the instructions, not me. Yeah. About how to put this all together. And how long does this go for? 30 seconds, mm. 7, 26, 25, 24, We're in the cyborg timer yet again. 21. Alright. One minute is done. So says Warren in his timer in his head. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. So nice second step. As well as the sauce. Ooh. So what we have here are the sauces and the vegetables, right? Yeah. So it's the mushroom. So then you do the sha sha next. Oh, the sauce? No, the pork. Yeah. This for um, pork is to take 30 seconds. Mmm. Right. And how long does this go for, oh, the sha sha? 30 seconds. Oh, 30 seconds. Okay, Warren, cyborg. We've heated our ingredients, yeah, as well as the noodles, and then we're going to put our soup base in, and it's for five minutes. So you're going to assemble the bowl, huh? Oh gosh, assemble the bowl. This serves two, by the way. So if you can't eat it all, that's the reason why. Go the mushrooms. Okay, you're gonna have to dissolve all that practically. <laughs> They're tonkotsu broth. Ooh, fiery. Alright everybody, Warren is going to make us our regular Butao King, but while this is piping hot, we're just going to jump into this Red King soup. Looks really, really good, by the way. Um, I've not had this in restaurants, so I don't know what to expect other than I'm sure this is going to be spicier. 
Let me get this all integrated. So I'm pretty sure this looks menacingly spicy. Put every single thing in here. So let's just try out that broth. I get that nice creamy mouthfeel from the tonkotsu. Spice-wise, I'm gonna dig this out. It's just very gentle. It just feels like garlicky, creamy. I'm not getting a, getting a kick yet. Mouth feels a teensy bit thin. I'm getting more of like a sesame sort of taste there. Yeah, mainly sesame I'm getting. Spice-wise, eh. Not really. Look at these noodles here. It's a big test here. So this looks like restaurant quality in your own home, basically. It comes with every single thing. And we just added an egg, of course. And let's try out those noodles. This noodles got some nice chew. They're firm. It almost like tastes a little bready, which is good. It's almost like a sign of like a well-preserved fresh noodle. Again, not really getting like a boatload of spice. It's more like a, like I'm really getting more of a sesame paste taste. Let me see. I'm trying to get dig out our pork here. It's on the bottom. There we go. Try that out. The char shell. Of course, you want it to be a bit lean, a little bit chewy, so then it absorbs all those wonderful tonkotsu soup base. And try it with the noodles. You get like a nice light soy out of that tonkotsu pork. Spice wise, again, flat for me. It looked really menacing. But it doesn't really for me. But I have no idea if it's because we integrated the soup uh, that that um red sauce and minced pork into the broth mm. or into the tonkotsu basis we were cooking it and some mushroom and some noodle i love that crunch from the kukurage under there let's get our seaweed more integrated here so all in all it does taste like ramen nagi um I do think the broth is a little bit flat. The mouthfeel, right about, you know, creamy, on the creamy side. But a little thin. I'm getting a nice, like, sesame, um, red spice kick at the end. But nothing that I find troublesome. Try some of that seaweed out. Mm, good seaweed. Then almost has... That refined green tea sort of taste. Last but not least, I think we'll have our egg. Although, it's not a perfectly runny soft boiled egg, everyone. So, it's just a hard boiled one. Let's cut into that. Yeah, just a hard boiled egg. <laughs> but in the future, we'll just do soft. We don't have any ice to make a soft boiled egg. Oh, no, pretty good. Mm. It's kind of like a... Pleasantly warm sesame paste taste with that red king. Um, tonkotsu itself, right about where you want it texturally. Um, lean, chew, a little chew, but then releasing more of that marinade. Noodles, about right too, as far as firmness goes. Really solid, but I think spice wise, number one. Um, not really that menacing. I would want a little more of a bold kick myself. And then, two, the mouthfeel is right about, you know, it's, it's rich. Not as rich as I like it. And again, you can customize this in the restaurant. You cannot do this when you're at home with these kicks. So, pretty good, I would say. Extra sauce. And I'm gonna put some more noodles in there next. And some extra soup. Wine poured me the last of it. I'm gonna go finish this and then we'll have our butao after this. Um, I've taken a few minutes to down the rest of the soup. 
there's more of that spice that digs up from the bottom. There's almost like a, a pleasant numbing spice there. Um, you're definitely getting some of that red pepper flavor. I do think, though, the soup is a teensy bit sweet with the sesame paste sort of um, thing going for it. So we're going to do the Butao King next. So while I finish this, I'm going to warm and prepare the ingredients. Butao King. Butao King. So this is the usual, the best-selling tonkatsu on the ramen nagi menu. Like I said, this is the closest thing to get to Ichiran-style ramen in the Philippines. By the way, again, I said that this thing serves two. I just ate two servings. And another two to go. So there's our tonkotsu broth, and then our cha shao pork right there. But really, I think the noodles on point, pork's on point, the ingredients are on point. Um, for particular for this Red King, um, like I said. A little sweet for my liking. More spice, less sweetness, bang. You got a you got a banger in my opinion. So again, basic procedure on the Butao King. It's the same as the Red King. Tonkatsu broth, you gotta melt that down for about five, six minutes. And then your noodles. Really warm you should put them. In. <laughs> He's doing them in tandem. But beside that, I mean the, the noodles. I think the Hakata style thin noodles, they retain a good deal of texture. There's good tension there. So even if you're a little premature and just let the noodles sit out for a few minutes, it's not a deal breaker. So that's a good that's good news for Warren because he he thought he botched it. I'm just getting all the ingredients go in there. Just for a flash for 30 seconds. We're assembling the Butao King. And mushroom, put in the chili paste. Oh, so this. And the vegetables, yes. Okay. Pretty. Here is our Butao King all done. Um, Warren is a little bit of a newbie as far as plating this. You should told him, actually you should put your noodles on the bottom, which he did, and then your broth next, and then all the ingredients on top. And so what he did was ingredients in the second step rather than the um, ingredients as the second step, and then the other uh, way. Ah, I can't talk. Um, let's see. So then I have to dig in to mix in that red chili paste in there. And just integrate that. So. Let's try out that soup with some of the red paste already integrated. Mouthfeel. You know, the flavor is about right as far as richness goes. Um, as far as the mouthfeel... It's a teensy bit watery. Um, other than that, it's still creamy. Still creamy. Um, good flavor-wise. Just about on par with what you get at the restaurant. Just finding that. The mouthfeel of the soup is on teensy bit watery. And not as oily as I like it. Have some of our noodles then. That was most important. You see it there. Nicely. Al dente. Hakata. Style thin noodles. There we are. Again, noodles. Nice firmness. There's a little bit of a bready character to that. Texturally. It's basically on the firm side. Almost um, extra firm, which is how I like my noodles. And of course, at the restaurant, you can get them however softness you like. 
But for me, I think that's perfect texture. And then you just let that, like, absorb slowly into that soup. Comes a little teensy bit softer the more you eat it. But, has that perfect tension to me. Um, I'm gonna have some of this tonkatsu. Or, sorry. I'm gonna have some of this shao shao. There's a tender bit of shao shao there. The shao shao, again, most of it's lean and chewy. There's some nice juicy bits since I got in that red king. So I think texturally tonkatsu is right about there. And how I would want it. As far as the spiciness goes, from that red chili paste, is I think <clears throat> very mild to say the least. Very mild. So ramen nagi at home, I would say, you know, it's practically made one style. Um, so I mean, at the restaurant, you I mean you gotta get them in the permutations that you want, um, and I feel that's the same way. There's no replacing it, but this is a very good, like instant noodle, if you want to call it instant noodle experience. Um, you're looking for something to satisfy those times you go for upscale, um, upscale Ichiran style ramen. I would say. I don't know if people would call that. Upscale, but I mean by Philippine standards, I guess so you could. So I'm gonna eat more of this, and then I'll give you the final word. Back in a bit. I just finished the equivalent of four bowls of ramen. So, this one was a little bit harder to put down, I must admit. Two things jump off the bat while I was um, downing all this. Um, number one, I like this less compared to the Red King, as far as the to-go is concerned. And I told you that the sesame paste is a little more pronounced than I'd like it. That that sort of peanut, like slight peanut sesame taste. Um, I'm feeling that a little more with this Butao King or the regular Tonkotsu ramen. Um, and then less, you know, the mouthfeel still feels a little rich. Again, it feels and tastes a little flat for me. For me. Um, so I think... And then secondly, this tastes way better in the na ramen nagi, the real ramen nagi location. Um, because I think the mouthfeel, the creaminess are more on point there. That red pepper paste, however, like which way you like to put it or how much you want to put on it, tastes a little fresher, has a little more zing here, the portion, and then the freshness a little flat for me. Um, but I'll tell you what is ramen nagi good for, especially for us here in the Locos Norte that have no ramen nagi anywhere near. I think maybe like the closest location might be in Baguio. Um, and of course being in lockdown, um, I don't think it's a good idea to go out of province at the moment just for that. Um, so that's what it's really good for flavor wise. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, now, it doesn't beat the real thing about ramen nagi. So, I guess the question is, well, these are more premium instant noodles, for lack of a better term. Because um, what you're getting is gourmet ramen you would get in Manila or in person, they consuming. Um, now, you might think, well, let's look at it this way. If In-N-Out Burger started making burger kits for anywhere out there, Outside of the states they operate, or let's say they don't, you know, even operate outside the United States as far as I'm concerned. If they started making them, and you remember In-N-Out Burger and every single detail of how good it is. But then finding out their kits, although they taste the same, similarly, it's, it's lacking something. That's exactly what this is. You know, this is a really good bowl of noodles if you're missing that. You're really craving for it. I know I have not had ramen nagi in about mm, 18 months myself. So, definitely was craving it. Um, having had it now, I think I would order again, but it won't be for another long time. I would rather just go to Manila and eat it. Um, or any other location around the world that has ramen nagi. So, 
on that shocking note, everybody, we're going to do the Ramen Nagi Butao, um, Ramen Nagi Green King and Black King uh, noodle soup. That's for tomorrow's show. So until then, everybody, keep cool but care. Remember to subscribe for more of our food and travel adventures. Um, especially the food stuff, because how am I going to travel? Well, hopefully in time we will. So, again, keep cool but care, and remember, Empire never ended. <laughs>